Hello, and welcome to the Mancore podcast. The Mancore is a community that focuses on topics in the areas of masculinity, physical and emotional fitness, and relationships. The Mancore was created for one simple purpose to offer a community for men seeking their deepest purpose and their greatest potential. For our first episode here at the Man Corps, we're going to speak with my brother Lance about a proper diet. It's the new year, and so many people started out with a goal to lose weight. Well, I know personally that my brother Lance has tried about every diet that's out there. Anything from standard American diet, vegan diet, dairy-free, keto, paleo, you name it. He's tried them all even going so far as to commit himself fully, going to extremes, diving fully into the diet, and really being responsive to his body's response to each of those diets. Today, in our episode, we're going to speak with him about his experience in each of those phases. We're going to run down the most common fads and diets in the market today, the myths behind them, and his own personal experiences. He's currently running up a YouTube channel where he educates people on the truth about the very popular vegan diet and daily life in natural farm living. I hope you all enjoy the very first episode here at the Man Corps. Thank you. What got you started on this long journey of, of experimenting with your body and testing different things out with your diet? Um, I've always been interested in health and uh, sort of what my body responds to and reacts to. And um, I think part of it was sort of a superficial thing. You know, of course, everybody wants to look good and feel good and um you know it's just one of those kind of snowball things one thing leads to another and and another and another and i've tried this diet after diet and so um basically it started out as just eating whatever i wanted um like a standard american diet uh then Kind of went to the vegetarian, vegan route, and then it's been sort of a 180. And so it's kind of been a whole full spectrum of um, you know what the my body responds to and uh, what I feel best on. And um, yeah, so I've, I've never been afraid to experiment and try different things. And so. Yeah, you've you've always been the type to to be real attentive to how you feel on things like or or how your diet or your experience makes you feel. So you you've always been very attentive and very responsive to that. Um so you mentioned a couple of different diets. You mentioned the standard American diet, then you went to vegan. Now you've done a 180. Uh can you talk about what your experience was like physically and mentally for uh, one or, or a few of those? Sure. I mean, just to give you a little brief backstory, uh, you know, I, I kind of did what, you know, most standard Americans do. Basically, I'd, I worked a lot, and then, you know, I also ate a lot, ate whatever, and I, I don't know if you've ever heard that saying, you know, you spend your time trying to gain wealth, and then you take your wealth, and then you try to get your health back kind of one of those deals. Um, it, it sort of how it started was I just ate whatever I want, and then I got really fat, kind of sick, and um, slowly but surely wanted to start trying different things. And um, so I think, I, you know, I put on, I don't know how many pounds. You know, I remember in college I was, I don't know, maybe 150 pounds. And then after working a lot and then kind of eating whatever I want, I had got up to a weight that I 
was not very happy with. I think it was two, almost 250 at my heaviest. And that's just one of those things that kind of creeps up on you over time, you know. And um, so, of course, I wanted to lose some weight, and then that's sort of how the journey started. But, uh, yeah, so I ate whatever I wanted, and then um, I went to vegetarian. And I didn't feel good eating whatever I want. That was the other thing, too. So, you know, part of it's vanity, and then also part of it is I want to, you know, feel good, too. So um, I went vegetarian, and I think I did that for about three months and uh, felt pretty good on it. And then I went vegan, and I was vegan for about a year and a half. Uh, transitioned over to after that because I had a – pretty bad experience on vegan diet went keto carnivore and then now i just consider myself animal based and um so just the majority of my calories come from animals and i'm not opposed to carbohydrates and fruits and vegetables so um that's sort of all of what i try and uh you know i went vegetarian and felt good and then I thought well you know I feel pretty good on this maybe why don't I go the whole vegan out and so cut out everything and just went vegan and so I had a lot of problems with that but yeah I mean that's kind of sort of how it all started and okay yeah I mean I can attest to the fact that you've 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 dabbled in about every possible arena when it comes to the different diets out there that are that are heard and you basically mentioned them all. You've mentioned twice now that you've had kind of a bad experience or some some issues with uh, with the vegan diet. Can you elaborate on on that issue or those issues? Sure. Um... Yeah, it's kind of a long story, so it's hard to condense it down. But, um, you know, I'll be honest. The way that it really started was, I mean, you've been on Netflix, and you know how many documentaries there are on there. Oh, yeah. So I think the one that actually got me going on it was called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And it was this guy who really got into juicing. And he did cure a lot of his ailments with juicing. And uh, he had a lot of autoimmune issues and blah, blah, blah. You know, so I had watched that. And I don't know about you, but for me, when I start watching things, you know, I go down rabbit holes. And so watch that. That led into, oh, what the hell, you know, cowspiracy. Um, can't remember what the other ones are uh, forks over knives all those little documentaries and um you know i kind of changed my paradigm on the way that i thought about food and um basically all those documentaries are geared towards living a plant-based lifestyle and that is sort of the mainstream way of thinking and um you know, I tried vegetarian for three months, and I felt really good. And then, like I said, I did the vegan diet, and I felt really good on that for, I'd say, about three or six months. And progressively and slowly over time, kind of started to deteriorate and have problems. And um, Okay. You know, it was given a hard reality check a year and a half later put it that way <laughs> sure sure now I, don't, I mean i don't want to pressure you and make you uncomfortable but are any of the issues or any of those things um things that you would be comfortable sharing Get, what the reason i ask is because if if somebody's thinking about going into that you know they're hearing a lot as you mentioned there's a lot of documentaries a lot of content out there about mm -hmm. vegan plant-based and i think the temptation is there so if i'm somebody that is thinking about doing this uh, I want to hear from somebody who's done it and experienced the long-term effects of that. So can you share, if you're comfortable with, uh, with, with doing that, what you experienced? Yeah, I mean, I ate 
um, I, I, you know, as vegans would say, a whole foods, plant-based diet. Um, you know, it's, it, the thing is, is that that diet is a the diet itself is sort of a fast. And if you know anything about fasting, you feel really good at first when you fast, but at some point, you know, you need to refeed the body. And so uh, I didn't know that at the time, but, um, you know, all those foods and all plants are just cleansing. And um, that's, you know, why over time, you know, people slowly but surely deteriorate. And um, I don't know if you want me to give you some examples of, what I did, I mean, I ate tons of food. I did the best that I could, um, you know, and just had problems with it. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I could give you a bunch of examples of uh, different things that there was good and bad, you know, but uh, more bad than good. Sure. Um, I, I think I remember, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I, no, I, I remember no, that. When you were first starting out, you know, you, you had shed a lot of weight. You said you felt better. Um, sure. You know, that 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 in, that initial like short term experience, that I think a lot of people have, you know, with with fasting or that cleansing phase. But that over mm-hmm. time that you, you developed this like a weird attachment or that you were almost married to your diet or married to food like you just couldn't get satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't matter the amount of food that I ate at, you know, at some point I definitely felt like I couldn't eat enough. And, you know, um, this is a disclaimer. I don't really have a problem with vegans. I have a problem with veganism and there's a lot of reasons for that, but the, the diet at the end of the day just lacks, um, fat soluble vitamins and those vitamins are essential. So, you know, you need them. I mean, you can't live without them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called essential. So, um, all in all, all this experience has led me down, you know, figuring out a lot about food. Um, but, you know, as humans, unfortunately, we can't only subsist on plants. And I believe that we could because the science and then all the propaganda leads you to believe that you can, but we can't. Some people can last a lot longer on that diet. Um, you know, I didn't last very long. I know some people that go 10 years on that diet, but um, I couldn't last very long. And that was one of my biggest issues was satiety. Um, I would eat, I remember eating like these huge, I mean, they were huge salads, you know, and then a big fruit smoothie. And, you know, I mean, the volume was insane. And I'd get done eating, and then, you know, it'd be about an hour, hour and a half later, and I'd be hungry again. So, but, you know, it doesn't start out that way. You know, you feel good when you start, and then over time, you know, that just slowly creeps in on you. So, and it's hard, too, when you, like you said, you've attached yourself to that diet or that ideology for whatever reason you do go into it for. Because Everybody goes into certain diets for different reasons. You know what I mean? Some people go keto for certain reasons, and um, some people go, you know, vegan for certain reasons. It's, it's they're all different, but um, that one is a special one in a weird way because they, they kind of get you on a lot of different fronts. You know what I mean? Where they'll explain that it's the best for health, or that it's you know morality wise it's the most moral thing you can do or it's the best for the environment and you can always you could argue that every one of those could be debunked so yeah i uh, i have uh some some questions that i want to ask you here that i mean we're, we're working on down the list here so the uh we've talked about it being, you know, everywhere, uh, in society. And it's just, you know, we're getting thrown a bunch of information about whole foods or whole food, plant-based diets. 
Uh, what's really going on? I mean, should should people be skeptical of the stuff that they see? Is there is there a, a message or is there a reason why they're seeing a lot of this information now? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would be skeptical uh, being as somebody who has always uh, experimented. I would never shy anybody away from that. Um, Cause that's the only way you're going to figure anything out is if you try it. Um, I don't know necessarily what the push is for it. Um, that's kind of a whole separate topic of, of in itself. A lot of people think that there's like a sort of a conspiracy behind it, that it's government pushed, which I don't even really want to go down that rabbit hole. You can totally make an argument for that, but and, and I've told you this before too. I, you know, the market dictates what goes on the shelf and what people are buying. So if people weren't buying kale and people weren't buying fruit smoothies and stuff like that, they wouldn't go on the shelf or these plant-based proteins or da 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 da. You know, the people are buying them and so people are making them. So, um. I would be skeptical, though. I mean, if you are considering trying it. But I would never shy you away from trying it, if that makes any sense. Sure. No, that that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, you mentioned before about kind of the culture that's surrounding veganism, the people, the, the community that surrounds this diet, uh, and how it's unique in its own right, uh, as opposed to, you know, the other tens of twenties, other diets out there. Talk about the, the culture that's surrounding veganism, not only the, the message that is being communicated and, and how they get you. You mentioned that before, but just talk about it. Like, you know, what's going on in these, in these communities. Can you talk about the culture that surrounds the diet? Yeah, it has a unique culture. And I always say that in my opinion, veganism preys on people with a good heart. But that information is um, misguided. Um, like in my case, um, I was curious about losing weight and feeling better and feeling healthy. And then I watched a bunch of documentaries. And when you watch them, they're very convincing. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen any of them? Yeah, they, they really seem to tug on your emotions more than they do. I mean, so there's certainly the health aspect, but they really get you emotionally. Yes. And that's the whole point behind it is to uh, get you to feel something. And if you're really far removed from your food, then you really don't have a whole lot to base it on. Um, so, I mean, you could argue that there is health benefits to it, but I mean, as far as, you know, being more moral, environmental, and all that, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of – but the culture, it's very strange. I think it kind of uh, uh, changes your personality or something. You notice that a lot, too, with uh, these vegans, how they change over time. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously, if, if you get convinced that it's bad to eat animals, I mean, wouldn't you consider that person to have a good heart, that they don't want to hurt anything? Oh, yeah. Right. So, you know, unfortunately, God designed us to be a certain way that we didn't get a choice on. And, you know, he gave us a certain digest digestive system that we didn't get a choice on. And, you know, a lot of these nutrients that only come from animals are essential and we need them and you have to have them. So I, I would like to live in a fairy tale world where we wouldn't have to hurt animals. I believe it too. And I wish that it was that way, but unfortunately it is that way. And, um, you know, I mean, that's kind of my whole thing with like the culture. It just, I think it kind of preys on people that are impressionable and if you don't have a whole lot of knowledge of where their food comes from, you see it definitely more with people that live in the city 
this is more of like a city problem. You know, and how far removed are people in the city from their food? You know. Sure. Yeah, you you so, you mentioned that a couple times. A far removed from food. So, what what do you mean by that exactly? Well, I mean, like if you don't, I mean, even if you had a garden, that would be saying something. You know, at least you're going to go out and get your your own vegetables and grow your own stuff. There's a relationship there with food. You know. Right. Uh, it's not going to Whole Foods and then getting something that was grown in Ecuador and then you just put it in your cart and then that you know, I mean there's a relationship when you actually do it yourself or you source it yourself or you buy local. Um, it, you know, that's the whole thing of an MSL too, you know. Um, I know for me, the thing that convinced me, it, the thing that convinced me was that I thought that it was better for the environment. And then of course I didn't want to hurt animals. Um, It, you, it seems, you know, you see, oh, eat the rainbow, and it seems so convincing. I mean, don't you look at that kind of food and then you think, oh, this is all healthy. This is what we're supposed to eat just because it's all colorful and bright. And, you know, it makes kind of sense when you look at it visually. Right. You, know? um, you think, oh, all these colors, I mean, I'm going to feel great. Um, and then also, you know, the, there's a big misleading thing that animals are, you know, farting and then they're destroying the ozone, and, you know, so then <laughs> yeah. you get convinced that it's the best for the environment. And you could make an argument for that, too, but um, you could also argue that having land and animals pre-roam and pre-range is better, Um yeah, I, I I actually uh, I watched the most recent one that I watched was uh, it was on Amazon Prime and it was something I think it was just the documentary was just called Fat and it you know it it's premised on exactly what we're talking about uh, the reason why I liked it uh, is because they did talk about I'm pretty sure this was the the Fat documentary they talked about the idea of of true agriculture. So, yeah, you know, the the vegan diet gets into like harming animals, but I think it's it's how they're looking at it, or at least this is my perception. It's how they're looking at it, how they're raised, where uh, true agriculture, if you let them roam uh, chemical free and do what they do, just be animals, um, that what that does for the environment is actually better, uh, not only for them, but it better for the environment, better for the soil, better for the air. Uh, and that is the true agriculture, not the mass production, uh, you know, the, the bad quality sources. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. And I, it's, it's a, a curious thing too, because there is one thing that vegans are right on and I do agree with them on, at least on veganism. And that is the way that animals are treated in those big industrial um, settings like you're talking about, mm -hmm. this, it is horrible. And, you know, that's not the way that it should, that animals should be treated. And I think that's why a lot of people go into it. That's, of course, why I went into it. When you watch that, and you know, care about them, you know, and then you see that stuff. But, again, you know, you're not, you know, harvesting or growing your own food or, you know, have your own livestock, you know, that's what I mean about not having a relationship with food. When you don't, you get sucked into these documentaries and, you know, um, but most food doesn't come from that. And, you know, yeah, I, it's, it's a curious thing. It's weird how it kind of emotionally pulls you in and, um, it, there's, that's, you know, it, it doesn't seem to me that that is the way to fight back against the, that system because even now that I do eat meat, I still don't agree with that system that they're talking about, that big ag, you know, putting animals in a big feedlot. Um, 
or making a big warehouse and sticking, you know, a million chickens in there. And, you know, that's not the right way to do it. Right. And, but, you know, not eating meat is not the way that you fight back against that system. Sure. So, yeah, it's a curious thing because, um, you know, now I raise chickens and stuff and, you know, and, and interested in getting cows and, <clears throat> but I mean, it's a lot different relationship um, to food now that I have. So, and that's because I, you know, raise male chickens and, you know, I grow my own food or I source it myself and, you know, it's just changed the way that I view food a lot. And that's just because I've gotten closer to the source. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, two things. One, I had a couple of your eggs this morning and uh, I have mm. to say it's the first time I've tried them. Uh, I brought back two of those cases back from Christmas and mm-hmm. I probably didn't prepare them or eat them the way that you do. But I, I can say that uh, since we've been talking, uh, I had them maybe 45 minutes ago. Not only did they taste better, um, but I, I, I can, I can feel, I can feel that they're better. It's the only thing I've had today. Um, there seems to be something that is in them that is energetic and, and almost like my mind is really clear right now, uh, which mm-hmm. is probably, uh, a sign that, that something I was deficient in. So, um, yeah, you know, you have been really, really good about um, changing your relationship with food. I know that you had done some fasting. Um, you know, some of this comes from the fact that, you know, you had this this thing about wanting to be kind of filled up and that you approached fasting to kind of change your relationship to food. And by virtue of that, you're obviously, uh, you know, you're closer to its source. Um so I can totally attest to those two things for sure. Going if 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 somebody goes vegan long term or if they're going to just go on plant-based long term, uh, you can probably speak to it as a guy, like for men physically, what are some things that happen to the body physically long term on that diet? Uh, that's a good one. Um Yeah, it's uh In the beginning, like I said, you're going to feel good. Um, but long term is the issue. And I think, in my opinion, I think long term you degenerate um, slowly over time. As far as for guys, I don't think it's as physically a, a detriment because we don't have a menstrual cycle. We don't, we're not bearing children. And so I think women take the brunt of it way harder than men do. And also, you know, they bleed once a month, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, for, I'll give you the, the canary in the coal mine for me was when I was a vegan, I got injured all the time. I mean, I, I got injured doing yoga. At the time, wow. I didn't. At the time, I didn't know why, but it makes sense because you need, um, you know, fat and you know animal hormones to repair your soft tissue when you tear them up. Um, I remember I kept getting injured when I was going to yoga, and then it would take me almost a whole week, maybe more. You know, because you know how much you're doing, like, down dog, and, it, you know, it's pretty shoulder intensive. Yep. But my shoulders would be on fire for, like, a week, a week and a half, and they, I feel like they would never recover. So that was one thing. The recovery wasn't very good. Um, I didn't feel like I had a ton of – I have – it gives you lots of energy in a weird way, but it's not sustained energy, um, that long-term energy that you're looking for. Um. So that was another downside that I found with the vegan diet. Uh, I remember three times reaching down to grab something or to tie my shoe. I reached down one time and I grabbed a toothpick that was on the couch and I threw out my lower back. Wow. One time I was going to go for a run and I reached down to tie my shoe and I threw out my lower back. 
and you know, I did it doing another time. I think I might've got up from, you know, going number two on the bathroom and I like kind of tweaked my back and, you know, it, it would take weeks to recover. I'm going, what is going on here? So, and the, the real telltale sign for me was one time that I did throw out my back. I ended up going to the chiropractor and, and you see this a lot in long-term vegans over time or whatever, but they start getting these spinal issues and there's a whole host of reasons for that. But I go there and my back's all tweaked up and he takes these x-rays and he goes, you know, he looks at it and we look at it and it's like, if you were looking at it at a side view, my spine was straight up and down. There was no curve to it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then if you looked at me like, like through me, my spine did like an S. And he looked at me and he goes, how long has your back been hurt? And I said, I don't know, but it's really been hurting like these last like four months. I said, I keep throwing it out. I don't know what's going on to it. And he goes, it looks like it would take you about 15 years to do what you said to your back. Wow. And so that was really telling for me. And I thought, you know, I haven't really, my back never really started to hurt up until I changed my diet. And, you know, it, it takes a while for all that stuff to sink in. But then over time, you know, I kind of realized that it was because of the way that I was eating. I was never eating any foods that were repairing and building the body. And, um, that's why over time you just get to see these people degenerate over time. But another disclaimer, some can last longer on it than others. I would never shame anybody for trying it. Sure. I have said all that. Yeah, you mentioned, and I, and I want to, I want to have you elaborate at least a little bit more about the effects, the physical effects for women. Uh, if we have women listening, um, it, uh, to me, it seems like wow, you know, I'm if I'm a guy and I want to do this, you know, if they're appealing to your emotions, if it's affecting guys, like women are absolutely, most certainly, uh, probably more susceptible to to this diet, to this culture. What do they need to be aware of uh, for for their health? What are they going to experience long term? Uh, yeah, um, what I see over time is uh, women becoming. First off, there's kind of two reasons why they get pulled into it. One is they're obviously a little bit more emotional, and two, you know, I think body image is even more important to them than it is even to a guy. Sure. And, you know, let's be honest, you know, most, most the girls that I see that do it, they go on there because they know that they can eat a lot and then still be skinny. Yep. Um, so I, they kind of get hit on more levels than we do. However, it affects them, I think, harder than it does guys. What I notice over time is that girls become – um, infertile, anemic, and then just like the guys, when they deteriorate, the girls get the same thing. But unfortunately, because they bleed once a month, either they lose their period or they bleed and then they just degenerate faster than a guy does because they're never replacing any of that. So um, it's harder to watch, you know, uh, because they're either pregnant or you know they should be nursing and it's you know i mean you don't have to go very far to see how detrimental it is but yeah you see the transition you know i'm sure that you watch a lot i know that you watch a lot of those people on youtube that are really promoting the diet and you really mm -hmm. you, you see a transition over time or when they first got started and and how they age so rapidly i mean you can see it underneath their eyes and their complexion uh, in there and they just they really do deplete they have just a almost like an ashy you know that vibrance kind of leaves them it does i mean unfortunately you know animal foods do give you a little bit of youth and beauty they just do because they they're going to restore your collagen and you know and stuff like that and you know that's kind of what gives people their beauty is in that youthful look well you know, plants only cleanse. And so, you know, over time, you know, that's why these girls and these guys and just vegans in general, they get this, this sunken eye, 
you know, their jawline starts to really narrow, their neck starts getting really thin, you know, and really what that is, is like I said in the beginning, veganism is just a fast. Your body still needs those essential nutrients and amino acids and all that stuff. And yes, you have stores. And so it's going to pull that from your collagen, from your bones, from your teeth, from your hair, from your, and that's why over time, these people lose all those things because your organs still need those nutrients. And so they're going to deplete what you have left to keep your vital organs still going. And so then that's why they get these like skeleton looks, you know, it's got to get it from somewhere. Yeah. And you know, that kind of leads me into the, to the next question. I mean, you do see value in doing it to an extent, like for cleansing purposes. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard you mention a few times about uh, looking in or people maybe should consider doing cycles or cycling their diet. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, it all depends on your goals. That's why I always say I would never deter you from trying anything because what works for one won't work for another. You know, and everybody responds to food a little bit differently. Um that's why I would say some people can last a long time on that diet. Um, if you're looking, if you're looking for a really good cleanse, I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend veganism, but I would recommend vegetarianism. Um, it's a great cleanse. If you need to clean the body, you know you kind of need to reset. You know, get away from the processed foods. It's a great diet. But, you know. Again, you, you know, you want to go back to eating basically what you're supposed to eat, which is, you know, animal foods. They're a necessity. So, um, yeah. No, that's, that, that's, that makes sense. Um, y- it's, y- it's, go ahead. It's hard, it's, it's hard to um, uh, give like an exact answer just because diet is such a varied thing you know and i think that everybody thinks that and i'm guilty of this too and i'll be honest this is why i do not preach any kind of diet anymore i've been wrong on every one of them i've had a problem on every diet that i've ever gone on and um it's just some were worse than others but there's always been little issues and um I just don't preach any type of diet. My main focus is to warn people of, you know, the problem of a vegan diet. And, um, but again, having said that, there's still benefits to cleansing and fasting and, you know, doing all that. So, um, the problem, and if, I don't know if you watch the Joe Rogan with Chris Kesser and James Wilkes, I have not yet, but I, that's um, you've mentioned that a couple of times now, so I think it's probably time that I, I listen to it. <laughs> well, if you do get a chance to watch it, see, now here's, here's the thing. I watched that whole um, podcast, and, you know, James Wilkes was the vegan, and uh, Chris Kester, I don't know, he, I don't know what he, he doesn't believe in that. And then, you know, I joke, but the thing that James Wilkes, kept doing was their argument is that plants have everything that we need. That's a huge vegan argument. We don't need to eat animals because plants have everything that we need. And that's a good argument. You can argue that, yes, they do have everything that you need. But, and this is what was going on on the Joe Rogan podcast, once you take digestion into account, it becomes a different story. Because our digestive tract is different than a herbivorous animal. So a plant might have iron, but you might not be able to absorb it in the form of plant matter because of all the fiber and all the anti-nutrients that are in plants. They have cleansing properties, but they don't, sometimes they make it hard to get the nutrients that are out of them because it's so inflammatory on your bowels. So you got to see that, that he argued for about two and a half hours about 
oh, quinoa has this much protein in it, and peanut butter has this much protein, and da 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 And then once they started going into how your body digests stuff, he didn't even know. You could tell then he was lost. And see, that's the thing. Until you take into how your body actually assimilates certain foods, that's where the vegan diet crumbles. And that's my problem with this. So, because we're not herbivorous animals. We are omnivores. And, you know, I believe that the bulk of our calories should come from animal foods just because they are easily to digest. So... It's an interesting thing. If you get a chance to watch that, you kind of get to see you. And I mean, even I was getting convinced by James Wilkes. But then once we start going into now it's in our belly and how do we digest it? He had nothing to say. Yeah. And because I, they, they, they don't take that into account. I mean, it's just like, you know, anything. I mean, you can make that argument for anything. Okay. It seems that way on the surface, but what happens once it's in us? Right. Then it's a different story. Well, and I remember oh. you mentioned that he gets apart from the from the the logical argument there. I mean, you mentioned how he kind of gets a bit emotional, like he's got like an agenda. He's going to make sure that you buy in, and I, you see that a lot. And I think that we're back to that, like you know, engaging people's emotions. Um, that the other two just kind of sat there, but he was he was hell bent to make sure that he saw or that those, the other two saw, saw his point. Yeah. And I mean, I think every vegan and anybody who's ever been vegan is is guilty of that, you know, obviously because, you know, I mean, you're passionate about it. Sure. You know, again, you've got a good heart and, you know, you stick, you really believe that you're doing the right thing when you're in that mindset. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, you really do, but it, it's just, it's not that simple. Um, you know, I'm guilty of it too. I did it too. And then, you know, you got hit in the face pretty hard, but I, yeah, I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird diet how it just pulls you in and none of the other ones seem to do that. And I don't know what that is. I mean, I always call it it's sort of a mental illness slash religion. And it is kind of a religion because. Or a cult. Faith, like it's, it's a bit cult like, honestly. It is a bit cult like. I mean, say if you were a vegan and then, you know, I wasn't. And then you were trying to convince me on it or vice versa, whichever way. The thing, the common thing that they do is okay, if I can debunk you in your health argument to argue that it's not healthy. Well, then they'll go, okay, well, then it's morality. It's the most moral thing that you can do. And if you can debunk them on morality, they'll go, okay, well, it's the best for the environment. And, you, and then if you kind of argue that and go, well, I could argue that it's better for the environment to not do it, and it's actually worse for the environment, well, then they'll, you know, there's always some counter argument really to both sides. And you know, again, that's why I'm like, you have to do it yourself in order to know it. But um, it's strange because, like, the keto diet doesn't do that, or the paleo diet doesn't do that. You know, it's not. <laughs> it's a weird thing. It is. It seems like there's there. We talked about the emotional attachment, but it seems like if people question, if I'm a vegan and somebody questions me about why I'm doing it. Um, and I give these three arguments, it's almost like it's an attack on my identity. I mean, these people, it, it's almost like they, they attach their identity to the diet where I don't see that, and I know you don't, you, you just don't see that in other diets. There's just not that m- amount of like, I don't know, unrest or, or anxiety around proving your point or validating the diet. It just, it's almost like it's people's identity. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. It's, it's, I consider the vegan diet sort of another form of what do you call that, like virtue signaling, and you know maybe that a little bit with uh, kind of new age thinking. Sure. I mean, you know, everybody's easily offended now. 
And obviously, like you said, you know, people are more emotional now. And, uh, it, you know, going back to your question about how guys should be on this long term, it, I, I think it feminizes the hell out of men. I know for me, I felt like things bothered me more. I was more sensitive. I worried about what other people, you know. Mm -hmm. And it it just changes your paradigm on everything. And, um, you know, I just, uh, it pacifies men, really. Yeah, doesn't it? I mean, I think you're right, and I, that's partly the culture around it, and the you know the I see I completely see, you know, you have big hearts and you're caring, and you know, um, I can see that side of it. I think physically, isn't there a lot more to make an argument about, like the animal products' direct impact on men's sexual health? Like, doesn't the the isn't there something to be said for the animal products and that it giving men more virality or, or more vitality uh, in terms of testosterone and, and things of that nature? Do you see that? I would. I mean, I, that's um, one of the benefits of me going off of the vegan diet was my strength increased. Um, a lot of that stuff got better. Like, you know, anything that's important to a guy. Yep. Um, you know, obviously strength and, you know, it, there's a bit of mental to it. You know, obviously it could feminize the geography, you know, it's somewhat of a weak trait, you could argue. Um, you know, and cholesterol is like the precursor to testosterone. So you're not going to get that if you're only eating plants. So, and I, I don't know about you, but I want as much testosterone floating around in my nards as, as possible. So... <laughs> Um, if the only thing that's going to help that is eating animals, well, then so be it. Yeah. So that's just, unfortunately, that's the way it is. But yeah, if it, you see these guys, if they give you an example, you see these guys start out, they're kind of strapping young guys and they either get forced by their girlfriends to go vegan or they're a caring guy. And so then they go vegan or whatever, but then over time they get long flowing hair and then, you know, it's like they just turn into these very feminine women over time. Yep. They're emotional, and so it just kind of changes their personality. It's weird. You wouldn't think plants would do that, but um, they do. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the interesting thing, I've, as we've been going through this, the interesting thing that, that I take from a lot of this stuff is that a lot of it is so external, meaning it's coming at you in different mediums, online, documentaries, social media, um, and you're, you're getting imposing views from, like you just mentioned, your girlfriend. Um, you know, there's, there's all these external temptations, you know, and we live in a time now where, you know, everything is kind of surface level deep. You know, that's what technology's done. Um, instant gratification. It's it, there's a lot of distraction, and and this is this is a huge topic. Your yeah. stance, as we've been going through here, your stance seems to be, and you and you mentioned too that you don't have a diet that you particularly pitched, and you've tried them all. I will attest to that. You go, going to extremes. Your stance seems yeah. seems to me that it's more about getting people to listen to their own body and its responses to its diet. Why do you say that? Um, everybody reacts to food differently, um, which is why I don't promote, um, any diet because I've been wrong on every single one of them. Um, and everybody's body, like I said, handles food a little bit differently. So, and I've told you this before, but if you might eat an apple and it doesn't affect me, but I might eat it and it just tears my stomach up. I, I don't know why it's everybody can handle food. And, you know, again, same thing with plants. I mean, nobody's allergic to meat, but there are people that are allergic to plants. So, you know, it's a slippery slope, but I, I say that and I don't preach anything because I feel like genetics have a lot to do with it. I think that people are convinced and 
this goes on both sides. Like, you know, there's a vegan side, a carnivore side, an animal based side, whatever diet you want to adhere to. I mean, everybody kind of in their own diet, even if they're not trying to sell you something, they kind of think that that's the most optimal way to eat. Right. Right. But it doesn't work for everybody. I mean, you know, yeah, you know how dad is. He can eat piles of vegetables. Well, when I eat piles of vegetables, they tear my stomach up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's my dad. But maybe they don't bother him. So that's why I don't I don't preach it. My main thing is that you need to figure out what works for you. And that's why I say if a, if a plant-based diet works for you, do it. I'm just saying that you might run into some problems on the road. Yeah, that's deficiency. That that's that's the temptation. All the external. Well, this is what I see working, and this is what you know Tom did, and and he lost a lot of weight, and this is what I see a lot of content, and media, and documentaries on. So this should be, this should this should work for me. And then you know I attach myself and my identity to it, um, not knowing whether or not it's going to work for me. And even if I see signs that it's not working. Um, all of this is an ignorance to your own, your own experience, how things make you feel. A recipe for me is not necessarily what's going to work for you. You, you mentioned that, uh, same with, with our dad. Um, you know, it sounds like you recommend people tweaking and, and, and looking internally to find out the best recipe and the, and the best approach for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the only advice that I would give or could give is that, you know, you just listen to your body and then do what works for you. And, you know, it should be an ever-evolving thing. Um, I, you know, I'm a, the extreme goes on the carnivore side, too, where they think that eating any plants is not necessary. You could also make the argument for that, too. But here's the thing. Animal products have fat-soluble vitamins and Plants have water-soluble vitamins. Those are also beneficial, too. So I don't even agree with the whole carnivore side, even though it might seem that way. I really don't. I think that carbohydrates and plants do have their place. I'm like, I don't think fruit would grow on a tree unless it wanted, you know, it was a necessity for something. Sure. It's really just to get fat for the winter, but... You know, they, they do have, you know, some vitamin C and, you know, if, if your body's craving something, you know, sometimes maybe listen to that intuition and delve into that. And, um, yeah, everybody reacts to food differently. I mean, we talked before, like, you know, I, I work with an Asian guy and he eats piles of rice and he's skinny as a bean pole. And I'm like, if I eat rice, I get bloated and fat and, you know, it just, I don't handle it well. Yep. And I think a lot of that has to do with my genetics. I'm sure that his ancestors, for the last however many hundreds of years, were probably eaten right. And so to him, it doesn't bother him. But to me, my ancestors probably never saw right. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard for me to digest it. Yeah. So it's, it's confusing because you would think that eating rice would be a good thing. Well, you know, it's, it's just not that simple, you know. Yeah, I mean, you're you're familiar with with um, you know my diet over the last you know decade or so. It was pretty pretty much the same kinds of foods, and that was a prominent food in my meal prep and everything. And you know, obviously, there's more to the story there, but um, th- to this, but you know, I would I would have the chicken, rice, and broccoli, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I've worked out today, uh, I'm I've been at work, and I've had lunch. And I'm like, I'm exhausted by two o'clock. It's that, and everybody that works in an office, and maybe maybe you don't even have to work in an office to to know to experience this. You experience that like two p.m. just plummet of energy, and you're like, dude, what? I'm foggy. Like I don't know what it is. And it wasn't all that long ago, maybe about a month ago. You know, when you and I started to really talking, and, and I, I was learning a lot from you and your experience. Uh, when I moved over to uh, to remove those things, or I, I took rice out of the equation, um, that like my energy was, was really good. It's more sustained throughout the day. 
Um, and you don't experience those highs and lows so much. And I ate that forever. So now I, did, I couldn't figure out what was going on thinking broccoli, rice, chicken, you know, this is what I see. This is what I hear. Um, and even I guilty of not, not watching what I was putting in my mouth. That's such, I think that we're all so guilty of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of this comes from, you know, um, not being in tune with your body. That's a big aspect of it too. I think a lot of people just eat and then they don't think about it. And then they go, well, I don't know why I don't feel good. You know, so there you do have to have a level of self-awareness and then also um, kind of a curiosity as to why you don't feel good. Cause you know, yeah. Um, but I mean, you even said that you changed your gut. What was that like? Like is before you were eating and then you just cut out the rice and you started feeling better or did you change anything else or what? Yeah. Uh, it, it, rice. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't think twice about like things like cookies or chips or, uh, you know, I used to be big on tortilla chips. Well, then I moved to pretzels and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm at least better than I was when I was doing tortilla chips from a health perspective based on what I've heard. But, sure. you know, it was a lot more like starches, breads. You know, I was really into having scones in the morning and working out really hard, you know, it's like my results, my results were still pretty good. Like, I mean, you saw my health overall was pretty good, but it's like, dude, I'm 35, 36. What I should be kind of crushing it. And why am I wanting to take a nap at like two and my energy levels are really bad? Like, so it was a lot more of the starchy vegetables. You know, I, I moved over to, um, you know, more of the, uh, meats and then, Basically, it's 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 basically paleo. Um, you know, I have my days, okay. but um, sure. tried to get rid of middlemen. Basically, um, anytime it, exactly. If it was if it if a, if somebody got involved in some way, shape, or form, or if I couldn't have hunted or gathered it on my own, and rather and granted, I'm doing that at the local grocery store. But if I couldn't right. hunt it or gather it on my own, then I don't eat it. Um, mm-hmm. and that really, really shifted things for me. And it was t- because of you that, um, that I learned a lot more about that. My energy levels have been great. My outlook and, and mental capacity has been great. So, um, but yeah, starches, you know, cookies can't, I just didn't think about that shit, you know? Oh, I'm working out. Right. So it's just, I'm, I'm good. Food. Exactly. Yeah. Pr- precisely. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I, like I said, I don't have a problem with fruits or vegetables. I believe that they have their place. I'm not opposed to them. Um, but most people's issue is honestly just man-made food. Yeah. And like all that stuff that you said that you were, you know, had a hard, that was all, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, chips or um, pretzels. I mean, that's just all, yeah. you know. Yep. And if you can cut that out, that would be my only recommendation. Is um, I just noticed that a lot. That's what most people's problem is: is the processed food. Yep. Um, but I hear a lot of people doing that paleo, and they like that, and that's you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a curious thing, diet, just because everybody, like I said, acts to it differently, and um, I, I don't promote one, but yeah, it's. And I don't think people realize um, just how much processed food they really eat, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you said, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm having pretzels, so that's better. It's like it, it's the same thing, just in a different form, mm-hmm. you know, really. So Yeah, and that's because that's what all the marketing tells me. That's what all the blogs that I read told me. But it was all because I was not listening to my body's response to the things that I was putting in my mouth. Um, so that's, that's obviously, that's obviously a big thing. I mean, you and I could spitball on this forever, but, uh, I do have, uh, two other questions here that I want to ask and then I'll let you go. Cause I know you got to head into work yet, but, um, okay. where can my listeners go to, to support you and learn more about the, the vegan diet and, uh, some of the stuff that you're up to, where can they find you? 
Sure. I got a little, I, well, I got a Facebook page. Uh, the name's Lance Tharf. Um, I don't really do as much on there as I used to, but um, you can find some stuff on there. And then also um, I got a YouTube channel. It's called Vegan Rehab. And there's all different kinds of things on there. I kind of post on a vegan, um, point out the idiocracy of what they do, and I just kind of started it. And so you can follow me on there, and maybe you'll have a second opinion by going vegan after you watch some of the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then um, – oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You just – yeah, this is my last question for you, and, and I didn't have this on the, the original list, so this is not something that you were aware of. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, uh, what is your definition of an optimal diet? Uh, I would say what... Just what works for you. What works for you. Yeah. I, over time, have started to realize that I think, in my opinion, I think genetics plays a gigantic role in um, what you can eat. Um, like I said about, you know, that guy that eats piles of rice. I mean, you know. If that works for him and he doesn't have some sort of response to it, okay, great. Then it works for him. It doesn't work for me. So, you know, again, it just comes back to listening to your body, being in tune. Um, if I could give any recommendation, I would say that, that animal foods are the least inflammatory. And so if you are having any issues um, to do sort of an elimination diet and then um, reintroduce foods, and then see what your body responds to or doesn't respond to. If it, if it doesn't work and it gives you a headache, throw it out. If it, you know, makes you dizzy and you don't feel good, get it out. Or if it makes you feel good, okay, introduce it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So if you're, and I've, you know, had this conversation with a bunch of people before, but if you're eating a hundred different things, how are you going to know what's causing your issue? Yep. So I just always recommend eating animal products and then reintroducing plants as a way to see what is going to give you whatever issue that you're having. Yeah. Because meat, meat will never really give you an issue. It shouldn't. A good quality meat source should not give you an issue. Yeah, if, but, I, have, if I have a leak in the roof, i gotta, I got to kind of tear down to the foundation and then, and then rebuild that foundation to repair that leak in the roof. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you hear people with like, you know, certain allergies and it's usually always what? Like a peanut allergy or I have a problem with gluten or I have a problem. You know, some people get like hives when they eat citrus fruit or, you know, everybody, nobody's allergic to meat. You don't see that with meat. You don't. You don't. You always see it with plants. So that's why it's hard for me to recommend any diet because you can eat a certain plant and it doesn't affect you and it might affect the next person Yeah, because they're not essential and you can live without them. But I do believe that they have their place. And another one of my gripes, which, you know, is this is on the carnivore side too. They always preach that you don't need plants, but if you watch them and like the keto people, they can't ever put on any muscle and they're always flat as a pancake. And not that having veins is a marker of overall health, but you'll see this a lot in the carnivore community where they're whining and crying that they can't put on muscle, and that's because they don't eat any carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So muscle will maintain that mass that they got. Like if you look at Dr. Sean Baker, he's a carnivore advocate where he just advocates eating only muscle meat, which is... I don't agree with, but, and I got fat on that diet, but um, if you look at him, he's a very big guy, he's very muscular, he's very in shape, but he has no veins. So that's a curious thing. So if he would add just a little bit of carbohydrate in there, he'd be more vascular, and he'd probably put on a little bit more mass. 
you need some sort of carbohydrate or a glycogen load in order to put on size. You just do. It, it helps in the growth hormone. So I got gripes with, with every kind of diet. I could go on for forever. But, um, yeah, it's just listening to your body and what works for you and, um, you know, sort of doing elimination and, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you, like I said, we, we could spit on this forever, but uh, we'll bring you back on for a whole different host of different topics around this because I know that people are going to want to know more, and, and they've already learned a lot today. But um, sure. that's all that I had today, so I'm going to uh, wrap up here, and uh, thank you for listening.